So Ian, what you doing? I'm making some pesto. Oh, you in the kitchen a lot. You like I to love to cook. Is this like is that a like a therapy or something like that? Yeah, I think you could call it a form of therapy. It's like I'm so much of my time is fingers at a computer keyboard. Mm. Sitting. And what I appreciate about the cooking process is it uses a very different logic, uses different parts of my body and um, yields generally, not all the time. Some delicious mm. Well, you know, you just finished the whole food thing, but you, know, you, you do so much stuff. I'm going to leave that alone. You know what I'm going to do? This is just got to be a short, inter a short talk right now. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, I have a question. Because you know so much about Cape Town or South Africa, whatever have you. What's this? this is good. What is this? This is the... Um, cheese? Parmesan. Ah. I'm not a cheese guy no more. No, straight not Parmesan. Yuck. <laughs> anyway. Mr. Chili Papa. <laughs> <laughs> that was good last night. What's that place? Tr Trigger Fish? Mm -hmm. I like that place. Man. I gotta go back. You know, I don't care. I'll drink. I'll, I'll drink. That, that dark beer was good. Hmm. Mm. Anyway, um, you know, you know so much about so what, what, you, you, you're South African made, as they say, we were King Williamstown, something like that. Where? Born in King Williamstown. Yeah. Oh, like everybody, Eastern Cape. Eastern Cape is all people. They, they come someplace else, and that's it. Well, look, you know, someone in South Africa. Here's a here's a question I have for you. It's going to sound kind of strange because you do a lot of stuff, but you know, all all countries, landmasses, they have some sort of legend or some sort, of, you know, like Bigfoot or whatever it is. What's 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 a legend in South Africa? What's what's kind of you know a, a myth or that has to be proven or unproven? Something on Table Mountain or something from Newlands Forest? Something from that comes out of the sea? Well, you would know this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, well, some, I mean, I, I think like I would say it's not specific to South Africa, but I think um, what interests me the most. The most the most is the myth of identity, hmm. which we're very partial to in this country because so much was taken away from so many people that one of the only things that could be asserted as legitimately owned, and I mean legitimately in terms of the, the political and economic system of our past, the only thing you could legitimately own and couldn't be taken away from you was your sense of tradition, cultural practice, and as a result, your identity. Hmm. So I think we've really doubled down on what identity is, but in that doubling down, didn't necessarily interrogate the mythology that led us to the starting point for the new <laughs> mythology of us. So, so we, our, our, our identity is predicated upon all these layers and layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of half truths. Uh, you know something? You took the. I was going to say. I was going to say half truths. That's the, that's the word that came to me right away as you explained all that stuff. Well, why? Well, you know. Would they ever go back and, 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 and get the truth? I mean, is history is, is history a thing? Nobody reads in South Africa. I shouldn't say that. Well, this but. is the thing, because I think in any, any identity, there's, I mean, there's truths, but I don't know if there's ever any origin of truth, because you know, all, all story is conditioning, mm. right? So how we eventually come to identify ourselves is as a result of all the stories we've been told about who we are or who we're supposed to be or who we are collectively. Mm. And who we are collectively also is something that shifts over time. Um, so, I mean, that, that interests me, apart from any other sort of, you know, well, Loch, the Loch Ness Monster of South Africa, whatever that myth mm -hmm. might be. You know, there's Van Hanks and the Table Mountain, and those are all fine. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, for me, I'm particularly interested in, in, in identity and how we choose to identify ourselves. And as a result of that choice, how we kind of dig ourselves into a particular immutable position that becomes... That's where we get into a lot of conflict with each other. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I see it in, in family lineages. Um, it's very difficult to really challenge the history or the kind of identity that has come through your family line. Because if you start to challenge that identity in your family line, there's a very high risk that you're going to break those family connections. Whoa. And everything's already so tenuous that, you know, lots of people don't have family various reasons, politically, health-wise, whatever. And so you, you want to hold on to the family that you do have. You don't really want to go and challenge people 
about how they see the world and why they see the world and tell them that maybe they're wrong. And we don't like mm. to be told we're wrong. Oh, oh, you know, oh, we, oh yeah, no. And that's, we've got our turf, we dig our heels in and we'll defend it. A lot of the time mm. we're defending a position that is half true. Mm. And, and I think, like I say, it's, I'm not surprised because of our history and how the only thing that you could really own was your position. Mm. And if that's the case, you're going to hold on to that position you know, with, with fervor. You know, I could challenge that and say that, you know, so especially the, the, the Amakosa culture, they have, they, they have their, their whole clan names. They can go back with their clan names. That gives them, you know, that, that gives them some sort of, you know, anchoring, whatever. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. The reason why I'm not going to do that is because you, which everything you've talked about is almost informed. You do this kind of, you do so many things, but it seems to me they're all connected to what you just described. Yeah, I think. I'm able to do a lot of things because they all connect in some way. There's a through mm. line. It's like what we were saying about people like Graham. You know, he's he's actually a nature conservationist who's end up, who's <laughs> ended up in, mm. in the media space with Chimorenga and with DJing. Mm. But all of that through line makes complete sense because as a as a conservationist, he was interested in indigenous mm. in indigenous plant life and animal life. And mm -hmm. so when it comes to the other, the other areas of his expertise, it's the same fundamentals. He's interested in the indigenous and the autochthonous narratives. And I think similarly for me, that, you know, I'm working on food dialogues. I've been doing coffee beans for 17 years. I've done all sorts of other things in and out of that. But there's a common thread to all of them. Mm -hmm. And that common thread is always story. I'm really interested in story and I don't really mind the canvas. Mm -hmm. So it turns out that I don't have the skill to put story using paintbrushes, mm -hmm. um, but my skill is in putting the story down on the canvas with uh, the pen or with a computer keyboard or through the lens of tourism product or through a series of events that explores food system, whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. I, for me, I'm really interested in the story and the story is what allows us to unpack uh, mm -hmm. who we are, but it also allows us to get beyond the collective narrative, you know, mm -hmm. uh, story allows us to get to the personal narrative. Mm -hmm. And, and that allows us to get some degree of vulnerability, and the vulnerability allows us to get some degree of truth and real connection. So we're always trying to talk about the collective. This is, for me, one of the challenges with how we, how we connect to identity in South Africa, the mythology of identity. When you, when, you, when you deal with the mythology of our collective identities, well, you can't really get to the vulnerability. Mm -hmm. But when you can just deal with the individual, then you get, you get a story that you can, you can extrapolate it out to the collective. But you get individual truths, and individual truths are, are way more informative than trying to understand yourself and yeah. everybody as a mirror of you, sure. than trying to do it through the collective, mm. through the stereotypes, if you like. Mm. Okay, well listen, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna actually end it there, I'm not unfortunately, only because, ah, you're, I don't wanna say, this is a bad word, but you're so dense, man. <laughs> man. I, I, I gotta stop and uh, digest this. This is going to take me a whole, what, six or seven months by the time I get back six here? Six or seven minutes. You'll be fine. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll figure it out then. <laughs> Thanks for this little bit of time, though. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure.